Hello, thanks so much for stopping by. Today we are going to walk through Squarespace blocks. And for anyone starting out on Squarespace, this can feel like a really daunting task. There are tons of options that are available to you on the back end, and it's all about learning the basics. So I'm gonna walk you through some of the most commonly used blocks, and then expose you to a lot of the other options that are out there for you that are all built into your Squarespace site. So just to give you a really quick tour, on our website, all of our pages are built inside Squarespace, and they're all built using blocks. So you can use, you can do something that's as simple as a one column, or you can add multiple columns, um, bullet pointed text, multiple images, slideshows, um, adding in products, anything your heart desires really. So I'm just gonna go over some of the basics with you now and we will jump right in. I have logged in to my Squarespace site, so once you have created um, your site, you will get this menu. If you have a commerce version, these menu items may be a little bit different, um, but you'll be in the page mode. When you're inside pages, you can have as many or as few as you want. Um, we have a pretty ginormous site, so we have quite a few, but I've created a test page for us to use today to walk through some of the basics. So You'll notice I'm working with something completely clean. This is what my site looks like. Uh, the header is all determined by what is listed here in the main navigation. This is my hello bar, and this the location of my logo has to do with the um, template that I'm using, which is Galapagos, by the way. Um, so everything I'm going to edit today is inside the page content. Anything I do inside here can be replicated in a blog post as well, but I'm just going to go over the individual page. Um, so you'll just need to go into edit mode simply by clicking edit, and you'll get this nice white area. Um, it will automatically generate a text field for you, so you could start talking typing right away, but to access those other kind of useful tools like the slideshow and other things I mentioned a minute ago, you're going to use this teardrop feature. Um, so when you select a teardrop, you can put it above or below anything you currently are working on. So I'm going to do a teardrop at the top, and this will automatically show you the list of all the blocks that you have available to you. These are built into every single Squarespace site, and they're all extremely useful, and they all have a lot of in-depth options once you kind of nail down into them. But today I'm gonna to go over a few of the basics. So text is what you'll probably use most often. Um, you can just type right away. I have pre-copied in some text for, our, for us to use. Um, you can add headings by um, typing heading and then or really whatever you would like highlighting it and then you'll get this nice drop down menu you can select heading one heading two heading three or even a quote option um, and all of these can be edited um, in the back end in your design tab so that you can predetermine what font, what size, what color, all of those things. So that's something I had predetermined and so I don't necessarily need to change that. I can just flip to heading one when I need heading one. If I want to do a subheading, I can do that as well in the same manner. So I might just do a heading two or a heading three to break up my text. Maybe I decide I want um, bullets, I can use those here. I can break this up as much or as little as I want. Um, and it really is quick and easy to get your text formatted right away. And this is just in seconds, all of a sudden I have formatted text. Um, I have the same bolding capabilities that I would have any, in any word processor. I can also italicize things. I can quickly add links. Um, with this link button. Now the really cool thing about Squarespace is not only can I link to any external website, but I can also 
immediately link to any of my own content by selecting from the list that it provides. I can also upload my own file. So I could have you download a PDF, get a JPEG, um, whatever really I wanted to give you access to. After I've added those, they might be listed in my existing files and I can select from that really simply. Um, but for now, I'm just gonna leave it as just a general link. Um, so you can really quickly edit text. You can also add in images. So um, there's a couple options that will allow you to add images. Im just selecting image, the basic block, will have a single image. If you want more of a slideshow or carousel view, you can select from one of the gallery modes. Um, and that'll allow you to upload more than one image at a time. So I'll just quick, quickly show you the difference. So if you select image, I can quickly add an image from my desktop or anywhere on my computer. I have pre-created a folder for our use. Um, so I'll select an image really quickly, let it load. Notice I can change the image title here. Um, that's very important if you are working inside Pinterest. Anything you have in your image title will immediately translate to your caption on Pinterest. So make sure you're really careful about what you put here. For now, I'm going to skip it. If I decide I really want this somewhere else, it's I don't want it at the top. I really wanted a slideshow at the top, so I want to relocate this. I am given this hand. This hand allows me to move this block anywhere else on the page. So I can click and drag, and sometimes it gets a little finicky, but you can move and relocate. So I can move it under here. Um, if I wanted something to the left, I could make it to the left. Um, this allows me to scale it back and forth, but for now, I'm gonna put it in the middle here, and we'll go through adding columns as well. Um, so I'm going to go and add a slider at the top. So I'm going to hit this teardrop button right now, go into slideshow, and now I'm given the option to upload multiple images at the same time. So I have already selected those on the side, so I'm going to pick those really quickly. Um, you just hold command uh, on a Mac to select multiple at one time. Those will load. I can go into the design mode and have it automatically transition. I can select how many seconds I want it to say. I can add next or previous arrows. I can take those away. I can add thumbnails below or take those away. I can add descriptions anything I really want to make this look the way I'd like. You can also quickly change it to a different kind of slideshow, so a carousel. Um, perhaps you wanted your images just stacked up and down, that's also an option. Um, but for this purpose, I'm gonna do a normal slideshow and not show my images, but I'll, I'll go ahead and auto transition. Um, now back on this content tab, you'll notice that I actually designed these with what looks like buttons. But those aren't real buttons, those are just part of the image, but I want someone to be able to click on the image and be transported to another page. So to do that, I can quickly go into this kind of gear icon and I'll be given more options. I can give it a title and description. Um, beware though, if you do that sometimes, it will add that to the image depending on what you have selected. So just be wary. You may or may not want to utilize that feature. But I can also have it go to a URL. So in this case, I wanted this image to go to bizchickcoop.com, but I might want it to go somewhere else on my site. That's an option. But you could quickly go through and add locations for all of these, which is really great. I'll hit apply, and now that's ready to go. Um, perhaps I liked this image, but I really just needed these two images on the right. 
And I wanted to have it on the right and not all the way across. You can actually edit directly in Squarespace. I don't recommend it as a general rule unless you're just cropping. Cropping is really the only thing I suggest using it for. The other tools, although they're available to you, I don't think they're as robust as editing outside of the platform, but it is an option. So go into edit. I can edit directly inside Squarespace by hitting edit. I'm given this. You can resize images, add text, do all sorts of effects. I'm not going to do that, except I'm going to crop. I want to take out the two images on the right and just use these two. Hit apply and save. And before you know it, I have the image. Now, sometimes it gets a little finicky. If that happens, go ahead and hit save um, and edit again, and it will usually pop right back to where it should be if that occurs for you. But if you wanted to have multiple columns, you can drag this, and you'll notice, okay, I'm getting a square box. That square box is like having text wrap on. Now, if I continue to hold, I'll be given other options. So. Um, that is going to make a second column for the whole site. I don't really want that. I just want a second column for this one paragraph, and it's being kind of finicky. So if that happens to you, which it has happened to me multiple times, so I will give you kind of my quick and easy way to fix that. I will use the line tool, and by adding a line, it adds a break in the code. Um, which just makes it easier to edit. So now all of a sudden this paragraph is set apart from everything else. So it should be a lot easier to make a second column now. Okay, see how that second column popped up? Now I can make a second column and I can make it as wide or as narrow as I want. And I can go back and easily delete those lines to get them back out of there. So now I have two columns, um, a slideshow, and some images, and I am really excited about this. Really, the only thing I feel like it needs is a great call to action and a button. Um, so perhaps I had a call to action here at the end, and it was really stellar, so I might make that heading three and center it up, make it look nice and great, um, and then maybe add a button. Um, I think buttons are fabulous for calls to action. There's three sizes you can choose from, small, medium, and large. And again, all of those settings can be edited inside design mode. Um, but I can quickly add a button, go to anywhere I would like. Again, you can go to your own content, a file, or an external website. Hit apply. And within just a couple of minutes, I have a pretty decent web page. It's not super jazzy, but that is just diving into some of the basics and most common block tools. Below this video, you're going to find a lot more information about the other types of blocks that are available to you and what their general uses are, as well as some really great links to walk you through additional tutorials if you're ready to dive in. Thanks so much for stopping by. And Come back next week for another video tutorial. Thanks.